The following program has been made possible by the members and partners of All Nations Full Gospel Churches International. aspects of this friendship with God flows the grace of intercession, the ability to stand before God and to ask him to have mercy, extend mercy and compassion and salvation and deliverance to another. It is so important that we we engage in this noble exercise because friendship confers that grace upon us. It gives us that ability to talk to God on behalf of others. When somebody is going through a difficult time, you can actually stand before God and speak to him concerning that individual. When God wants to judge a person, you can stand before him and plead on behalf of that person. The grace to in intercede for families, the grace to intercede for kings, the grace to intercede for nations, peoples, and everyone we choose to help in time of need. Hence, God warned us when those who have the blessing of Abraham do not intercede to make things better for loved ones and people in general. In Isaiah 59, 16, and he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, it sustained him. It's amazing when God saw that nobody was engaged in this noble exercise. It's amazing, sometimes we don't even pray for our own family members. We forget them. They are not born again. They may subscribe to all kinds of religions, and yet we don't pray for them. When God saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, nobody to stand in the gap. He, he was shocked. Do you know that Abraham, if God did not want to help Lot, if God did not want to help him, he would not have disclosed to Abraham. Your family, most of them don't even know that hell is real, but you do. You know they are going to hell. So we need to step up to the plate. We need to bat on their behalf. In Genesis 19, 26 to 19, it was an account of Abraham's intercession that Lord got off, but his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. 
And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and he saw and behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. It was on account of Abraham's intercession. Else Lot too would have been swallowed up in the destruction. In the overthrow of these wicked or those wicked cities on account of their homosexuality and sodomy. In Genesis 20 verse 1, and Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gera. So Abraham moves further south between Kadesh and Shur. And in verse 2, Verse 2, now Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she's my sister, and Abimelech, king of Gerah, sent and took Sarah. Abraham engages in half-truths about his wife, tells people she was his sister. Partly true, but not the whole truth. Once upon a time, she was his sister. But now, upon a time, she is a wife. <laughs> and yet Abraham keeps telling everybody, oh, my sister, my sister, my sister. So it was a flat lie. He, he, he wasn't being forthright. And the reason is that that woman was extremely beautiful. And she, um, everyone who saw that woman wanted a piece of her. And so Abraham decided to use lies to um, protect himself. The question is, if this woman well, your sister, why have you been trying to make a baby with her? <laughs> Abraham is displaying a sense of insecurity about his wife because she was very pretty. Insecure men should not marry pretty women. <laughs> it's very, very important because people will talk to your wife, they will just... Um, even when they greet, they won't let go of the hand. They will prolong it. And all this will just break your heart. So please, if you're insecure, move on. Take somebody else. It's very, very important. Because you know, some will even go beyond mere admiration and start talking and looking and all kinds of things. So. Um, learn from Abraham and stay away from beautiful women and uh, pick an average one. <laughs> Abraham was so scared. But how, how do you feel when you tell people she's my sister and then the kings of the place call for your wife. They ask for, for your sister to come. And how do you feel? I, 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 it's, it's something we need to ask him when we meet him in heaven. <laughs> so, the, so the king took her. And unfortunately, Sarah was also complicit in all of this. Because she too should have spoken up and said, honey, remember the first time. Why are we doing it the second time? 
Because if you look at Genesis 12, 11 to 13, and it came to pass, when he was close to entering Egypt, that he said to Sarai, his wife, indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, that I may live because of you. And uh, after the first incident, he's repeating it again. In Genesis 20, verse 3, but... God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she's a man's wife. God intervenes because this woman is no ordinary woman. God has said through her seed, you and I will be here today. And so God must protect this woman. She is the mother of many nations. She is the carrier of the heir of the promise. And in verse 4, but Abimelech had not, Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Why is Abimelech ask, say, asking God that? Because everyone knew what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. That when God gets mad with you, he will rain fire from above and consume you. So he asked God, tell me, what is my sin in this? The man himself told me that the woman was his sister. Did he not say to me, she's my sister? And she, even she herself said, he's my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I've done this. God is so real that he can speak to anybody, even hidden people. And the man makes an interesting point. He said, I did this ignorantly. The, the, it's so important. In his defense, he said, the man told me she was his sister. The woman also said, he is my brother. They both left out their efforts to get pregnant. <laughs> that detail was left out. Abimelech pleads his innocence in this matter. Verse 6. And God said to him in a dream, yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart. For I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. So God agrees with Abimelech. God says, I know they didn't tell you the truth. It's the reason I also kept you from sinning by touching her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. Just think of it. Restore the man's wife to him else I will kill you and kill everyone in your household. 
And the word restore is important. How do you appropriately restore something you have taken wrongly? Remember, Abimelech in the natural was right because he didn't know. Yet before God, he had sinned by taking Abraham's wife. I want you to ponder over it. He didn't know. They lied to him. And yet the command from heaven says, restore. The restore here is not what you think. God said to him, restore. If Abimelech chooses not to restore, he will die. And all his household, despite his ignorance, ignorance is indeed no excuse. Despite God declaring that he didn't know, yet Abimelech was guilty of taking Abraham's wife. Hence the command to restore. God said restore. Restore in the Hebrew, shub, to turn back. Not necessarily with the idea to return to the starting point. The general word here, to retreat, often to advance again. The word means pay. It means recompense. It means recover, repent. Recu no, you are required to requite. In other words, restore, return, reverse, reward. Abimelech fully understood the command, not just to say, foolish man, here's your wife. No, that's no restoration. And that's what most of us do. He couldn't go to him to say, foolish man, get your wife. But to restore with compensation for the crime or offense committed. Else he would die. But why would he die? Someone freely gives me his sister. Do you know how we reason when it comes to the things of God? Somebody freely gives you his sister. And now you must pay else you die. He gives you his sister to marry. And now God wants to kill you and your entire household. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things in their hearing. And the men were very much afraid. You know what he did? Devotion. He called everybody. Come, 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 come. You have no idea the dream I had. God told me, I'm a dead man plus all of you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the devotion. And the Bible says everybody was scared to death. Because they've all heard what God did to Sodom and Gomorrah. And so they knew God was real. And for this to come so close to them, the Bible says they were very, very much afraid. The men were afraid. In verse 9, and Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, what have you done to us? How have I offended you that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done this to me that ought not to be done. In other words, Abraham, what made you do this? Mr. Abraham, why did you do this to me? What crime have I done? 
What did I do to deserve this? You have put me and my kingdom in a great sin. You should never have done that. And verse 10, then Abimelech said to Abraham, what did you have in view that you have done this thing? What's the plan here? You came here, we welcome you. And you play such a game. Why? Verse 11, and Abraham said, because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place. You, you don't serve God, do you? You. <laughs> and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. In those days, that was the practice. So he said, you don't fear God. And because you don't fear God, you, I know you can kill me for my wife. And that's why I gave her to you. But I, I knew God would strike you. <laughs> So look at, and it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her, this is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place, wherever we go, say of me, he's my brother. That was a deal. And the lady agreed to it. Then Abimelech, Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants. Look at the diary. Plus, <laughs> a, a woman you will never get to marry. But God says, restore. In other words, you don't just bring the woman, but you pay compensation for even allowing her to be in your house. And Abimelech took sheep oxen and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham and he restored Sarah his wife to him you think of it restoration is not I took $100 from you here it is get it back no it must be accompanied with something extra This is what in theology is called the doctrine of the fifth part. It is mentioned in scripture nine times. The act of restitution for enduring someone by fraud, oppression, cheating, or deception. The value of the item in question was to be returned. And 20% of the value of the item was to be added. And in theology, it's called the doctrine of the fifth part. If you took anything wrongfully, anything that didn't belong to you, and you have to return, you return with a fifth part, 20% interest. This is, and everybody practice it in that era. In antiquity, in ancient, ancient times. In this way, curse or cursing was turned into blessing. Otherwise, you brought a curse upon yourself. In Leviticus 6, verse 5, or all that about which he has sworn falsely, even if you swear falsely, he shall restore its full value at one-fifth 
more to it and give it to whomever it belongs on the day of his trespass offering. In other words, you just don't go to the priest and say that, you know, I did it, and so this is, no. You add the fifth to it. And remember, Abimelech wasn't going by the law, but it was practiced. It was widely practiced in ancient times, even before the law of Moses. So God said to him, restore. Remember that Abraham predates the law. The principles that God taught Abraham was divine principles that were enacted into law for God's people who are Abraham's descendants. Now for us who are God's people through the priesthood of Christ after the order of Melchizedek, these are spirit, we are the spiritual descendants of Abraham. You see, the blessing of Abraham are for us today. As proclaimed by Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Look at that. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So now, when God said to Abimelech, restore, he knew exactly what to do. God said, if you choose not to restore, you will die and your household, the doctrine of the fifth part. I said it's mentioned nine times in scripture. In Leviticus 27, 31, if a man wants at all to redeem any of his tithes, he shall add one fifth to it. The tithe of an animal or food belong to the Lord. However, a person could redeem this tithe by paying the value of the animal or food with an additional 20%. Thank you for making this precious investment into your life. We believe the Word of God will transform you and usher you into new levels of God's goodness today. We invite you to connect with our ministry. To order inspirational books, messages, and other resources, call us toll-free at 1-888-263-4272. You can also visit us online at www.anfgc.org.